for public talk English. But soon after this program, in its one is General Wilson. So participants are get ready for that program. Okay, we will do it. What is the video? What is the video? But soon after this program is sub junior talk master English. At soon after this program in stage one, first program is sub junior talk master English. It will get registered. After after sub junior talk master English in stage number one is general Gazan. Sub junior talk master English, the participate of sub junior talk. Students of workers from different parts of the Kuh who had came all the way from the Garden of Knowledge under Marcus expulsion exposure and talent and word power Taiba Garden Gujarat Taiba Garden Bengal Alu Maisu Marcus Ul Hidaya Kuh Taiba Garden Haryana Taiba Garden Delhi Taiba Garden Dajistan Markins Bangalore Markins Surat of Bangalore Darussalam Gunderbet Madina Tinur Kerala Marcus Avanox, Tindy Tindy, Low, State Number One, Senior Public Talk English. Judges, Masutavana, Principal, Taibagat and Tagar, Rana Munda. IT coordinator Toy Garden. Warm welcome to the judges. Junior Talk Master English. Participants should report 
but from the famous scholars working in the field of modernity and industrialization. The famous Cambridge historian Christopher Bailey says that the distraction is inherent in modernity. It's nothing aloof from modernity, but it is inherent in modernity with all we know that the two world wars that happened when the world was taught that it was in its transition to modernity. But he theorizes that the modernity is not told fully development, but the distraction is always along with modernity. So this is what is the situation of the modern European world. So to sum up with some other situation of uh, industrialization and ecological disaster, Alfred S. Crosby, the famous American ecological historian, says that the ecological destruction caused by the European colonization in the Latin American and Asian world is much worse than what happened in the industrialized world today. So this is what happens in the contemporary world of the ecological disaster and modern catastrophes that happened in the aftermath of modernization. We all know that a couple of weeks back, a great bushfire that happened in Australia that caused the death of one million animals, which are nearly extinct, like kangaroos and koalas. And we're looking at the situation of the Ottoman Empire's capital, Constantinople, the last three months that caused two big earthquakes of 6.2 and 4.7 richest scale. We all know that Constantinople, which was the capital of the biggest Islamic Caliphate, Ottoman Empire, in the last three months, a couple of days back, I mean four days back, a four-point scale, richer scale earthquake hit the capital in Constantinople, I mean the current Istanbul. So what is the situation of Islamic cities now? The ecological disaster, the modernity, the architectural crisis is shaking the Islamic capital. This is where we want to get back to the Islamic model of architecture, conservation, modernity, and ecological balance. This is where the Islam keeps a fundamental principle of ecological balance and architecture in modernity. So I'm just getting to the Islamic solution. We all know the great and the Lucian mystic Ibn Arbi. William Chidik in his book, Ibn Arbi had the prophets, quotes two ideas of Ibn Arbi. One is macrocosm and one is microcosm. The macrocosmic idea is that the humans are a small being living in the universe. So the universe is bigger than humans and the universe is much more powerful and bigger than human beings. So the universe should be given the priority. In the next view, the microcosm, the every universe is created for the sake of humans. So that the humans should be given the priority. So in between keeping a balance with the microcosmic view and the macrocosmic view, Islam put a balanced way of Islamic uh, ecological and modern conceptions. We all know that how the Prophet said, even when we know that the next day is the doomsday, we should plant the tree. For the Islamic concept, the modernity or the future comes hereafter also. This is the concept of Islam. So, and in architecture, we all know the prophetic codings that no building should be greater than a masjid in the vicinity. So this means that the bigger buildings, a uh, lot of bigger buildings create architectural crisis. We all know the, the flat, flat construction that makes digging deep into the uh, mud and it's creating the shaking in the rocks that sustain the earth. This is where the, uh, the uh, shake earth shake and the modern catastrophes of the Constantinople and everything is causing. So this is the Islamic solution. We all know the water conservation principle of profit. So this is where the ecological principle of the conservation of water, which is the crisis currently in Australia is going on because the bushfire that happened was because of the lack of water in the forestry area. Also in the Ottoman uh, Islamic empires in Africa like uh, Senegal, Ethiopia, and Djibouti, all this area is lacking the water. Why? Because all these areas under the Ottoman Empire either, or the Seljuk Empire either, or the Saudi Empire in the West African Moroccan areas. But all these empires is still facing, now facing the water lack. Why? Because after the demolition of the African Empire by the scramble for Africa in the, after the First World War in the 1940 to 1990, all this happened because of the modernity that came the colonialization of Germany, Italy, and France, all they caused industrialization as mass looting of resources from the African continent that goes to the drainage of water system to spring off from the African lands. 
This is where the Islamic principle should be enforced today. So the principle of Islam like ecological conservation from water reservation, the architectural building and uh, conservation of trees and plants is a wide variety of opportunities for the future, for the future to flourish in a modern way, which does not uh, uh, bring up a particular kind of catastrophe or demolition that is happening just now. Reading in the Forbes, uh, <coughs> Census, sorry, census of the current period. It is said that the most architecture and modern cities in the world, like Dubai and New York, is where people feel bored very easily. The first thing city was New York, and the second city was Dubai. We all see that architectural mega structures. It is where the people feel so bored because there's no organic anything, nothing organic, no trees, no plants, no anything. Nothing is everything is mundane. There is nothing new. I need to flourish, but this is not the way in the Islamic flourish. Because the Islamic concept of ecology put forth a ray, the forestry, the modernity, at the time ecological balance for animals and everything. Even the uh, Imam Shafi told that giving a particular water, we all know the history of Imam Rifari giving up a, a little water to the dog is an act of sadaka, and with that reason, a prostitute was given to the jannah. So this is the concept of Islam, bringing the animals, bringing the humans, bringing the unwanted, everything to the core of the principle, and bringing, uh, developing a God modernity which constitutes everything. It's nothing aloof, it's not keeping, rejecting anything like animals, like humans, like buildings. So in the Islamic concept, adopting from Ibn Arabi, in the macrocosmic view, humans are alone important with the non-organic matters like buildings and some other things, waters and plants. So this is what is the concept of Islamic modernity. In the modernity, the great debate is between humanism and non-humanism because the humans are kept at the center and everything which is not human and not living are just humiliated or rejected from the scene. But the Islamic concept of modernity is that everything biotic and abiotic is brought into the core and everything is considered accordingly. So this is what the modernity futures are said by <coughs> Africa's Crosby, the future modernity, the modernity which encompasses all biotic and abiotic things, which is neither human nor non-human, but it's a middle path combining the human and non-human factors. So this is all I have to say. Thank you. Have a nice day. Assalamu alaikum. CDO, Public Talk English continues. Judges, please note. Next court lecture B. Court lecture B on the topic. On the stage. Topic Ulema activism and Marcus movements in India. Topic number four. Dignitaries and my dear friends. I'm so honored and so privileged to be here for running short of words about the fantastic subject which has been discussed and have been discussing now in all over the world. Marcus is the one of most leading institution in our days. Marcus is providing education morally and religious. Marcus make a path with their own vision. Marcus is now shaping a culture. There are thousands of people, 13,000 of people are studying directly under Marcus and in and many others are getting the help and desire of Marcus in many ways. We know that the ancient time of Kerala culture it is tot totally different because the Wahhabism and Jamaat -e Islami are holding power in Kerala and they are converting people from the actual path of Islam. But when the Marcus come to the stage or come to the, or come to the vision, the Marcus start to form a different variety form of culture. It leads to giving people moral and spiritual education. 
the education mold a person as a better version of as a better version so we will go outside of Mar uh, kerala we will miss as a institution like markas because the culture is totally different and they can't hear the voice of ulama and they can't consider any religion but on the case of kerala sheikh abu bakr ahmed who make a better path and he leads the institution markus sakaf sunia it form a better vision and a better culture in in kerala it's not only the field of religious but also in the field of academic education and in the every level of education the markus have its own role in nowadays we know that now the markus is forming <coughs> in nolad city which provide foreign education also nowadays also markus is providing foreign education but it make a vast and wide facilities for foreign education with collaboration with markus there are many ulamas also joined in this movement in in this ulama activism so in every field we can see in kerala the fingerprint of markus markus shape and a better um, strength and it will provide provide muslim community more political security the ancient time we we can't uh, go in uh, into the side of an a political leader but all this time we have our chance and we have more cons consideration when we are going to a political leader or a uh, government department because markus is forming and delivering variety and better version of education that will attract the government and the all level of government department Thank you for hearing me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bul gai, gulshan gai, bul bul ki baari aagai. Ghabrao na bachcho, rizal ki baari aagai. Kon bul gai aagai? Kon bul gai? Kon bul gai? Kon bul gai? ഇൻഡോർ <laughs> <laughs> next code letter c judges please note code letter c on the stage after this program stage number 1 sub junior top master english alhamdulillah <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على من كان نبيا وآدم بين الماء والتين مدير استيمين تلاكسوس and disciples of Islam 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Without more elaboration, I want to take you people towards my topic, and my starting topic is role of Muslim in the formation of Indian Republic. As we know, in our Indian history, from 1857 to 1947, before that, 17 or 7 to 1947. Hazrat Tipu Sultan Rahmatullah Ali, he kept his himself in enhancement of Indian Republic. Without more elaboration, I want to say, inform you people. First, he brought in the science and technology in the formation of Indian Republic a rocket. He invented due to the position of this Indian Republic to make enhancement, to make develop, to make in a track through. Rocket. After that, after coming large, after coming through two things, he brought again silk to the India in the formation by which Indians' economic conditions will be enhanced. Indians' political, in Indians' political condition will be enhanced through the position of tra trading, importing, exporting with the numerous countries which existed in the entire world. After passing passing through from 1817 to 1947, Shaukat Ali, Muhammad Ali, they kept themselves to sacrifice their health, sacrifice their wealth, sacrifice their families due to the position of Indian Republic. Nowadays, the peoples are making a Muslim Islam phobia, and they are making us in a conflict list. Unfortunately, we are not in the conflicting list. They are making us. After 1947, India declared that this country will be the secular. But Alhamdulillah, 1,400 years, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teach us, taught us about secularism. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala excited in the Quran, "Lakum Din, Lakum Aliyadin," which means your religion will be your religion, our our religion will be our religion. There is no contradiction between them. But the peoples are indicating us as a misled. Their people are indicating as the astray peoples. They are indicating as if we are terrorists. But my dear esteemed to lectures and disciples, those who are gathered, accumulated in this wonderful accumulation, we have to understand they kept themselves to blame us. They kept themselves to to make us. But we are not. The Prophet said, "Sil man khata'aka wa afu am man zalamaka wa hasin ila man asailek," which means, "Sil man khata'aka make good deeds. Who will make you bad deeds? Wa afu am man zalamaka and forgive for those people who are training you. Forgive for those people who are training you. Wa afu wa hasin man asailek and make good deeds who are making the bad deeds." These are the teachings of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before 1,400 years. After Shaukat Ali and Muhammad Ali, the the peoples in this state, in this Bengal, 80 Mujahideen they chosen and they killed very horribly. They hang from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, 5,000 intellectuals continually. They won't take any things in our name. We are the For example, a goalkeeper in the football game, which is international game, takes the ball to the striker. The striker will be the goal to last. Same was in India for the Muslim people had been like this. We are taking the, the ball till the goal, but the strikers are. They are not at least say our living living to the. Nabi Pak Sir Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من غش فليس منا أو كما قال عليه السلام. If we decide for anyone, he won't be in the community of Islam. If we decide for anyone, it may be Hindu, it may be Sikh, it may be anyone, he will be not in our community. He won't be indicated as a Muslim person. But how can we? Our Islam is teaching like this, but peoples are appearing in like this. Islam is teaching to to callings towards. Udhu'u ilaa sabili rabbika bil hakmati wal ma'azzati wal hasan. 
We are calling towards using our strategies, we are using our wisdoms to call the misled peoples, to call astray peoples towards good paths, which will be taken to the Jannah. But the peoples are indicating as a misled peoples. Our history will be the, our history that we have to prove through the educations, we have to prove again we are forgetting our role models totally we are forgetting our role models we are not applying any single rules we are not becoming the evidence of islam we are making our things and as nowadays education academic culture had made totally misleading to the, our country alhamdulillah our markers even also kept himself to produce provide every kind in numerous education is if the student if the disciples are asking for a technology knowledge the pay the and alhamdulillah we are providing technology knowledge to make enhancement to make a good person in their life if the papers are asking terminology apotomology geology astronomy bonati like this education will be provided from us not to become a victim of islam for here by saying this, I want to conclude my speech. Bakhir Dawan, Alhamdulillah Rabbil. Same year, public talk, English continues. Next call letter D. Judges, please note call letter D on the stage. Topic number one Islam and science, defining recovery of the golden age of Muslim civilization. Topic number one. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه جميعاً من بعد. Respected viewers and my dear friends, I have great pleasure and privilege to be here with you. Islam and science defining the recovery of Islamic golden age in Muslim civilization. Before entering this core point of this topic, I would like to grab your attention to to a great basic point of this subject that is Islam and science. Someone says that uh, Islam is prohibited the science and Islam is banned the science because there is no in science anything in their Quran or in the Hadith. But this is a very wrong thoughts because the Quran says that please think around the world because every thought leads you to God. The Usam background of the great scholar is said that there is no conflict between Islam and science. So someone thought this thought means there is no in Islam in any science. This is wrong. And next point that Islamic golden age. How is they build the Islamic golden age? And how it lo they lost their age? These two topics I would like to add to this topic. First of all, how they build a golden age? As you know that, first we, uh, the, first of all, the, who are the scholars of the golden age, they understood their beliefs very clearly. They understood the Quran very clearly, and also hadith, and every kitab, and jurisprudence, and everything. And with, they understood very clearly the saints also. Do you know that Imam Ghazali says that in his Kitab, don't critique anything before you understanding it clearly. So he studied, after he studied the Quran and Hadith, two years philosophy of that time. And he critiqued that by his great Kitab, Maqasid al philosophy and Tahatif al philosophy And I know the most scholars of the Golden Age, they studied the Quran and Hadith very well. And then after they understood the science also very well. And they criticized that. And they produced a new thing. Or new knowledge. The way of knowledge. The seeking of way. So they built a golden age that time. The 8th to the 12th century. So after the time. Why and how they lost their golden age. There are three or four points. First of all. They turned from the way of knowledge to the prosperity or the way of money. Means they, they lost their knowledge 